Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome back to part eight of our Epic Next.js tutorial, where we're going to take a look how to set up search and pagination. You could find the complimentary article that we're going to be using for code snippets in the description below. But today we're going to take a look how to set up search and pagination inside of our application. So without any ado, let's get started. Currently, if you take a look at our application and navigate to our summaries tab, you're gonna see our, our summaries. But what we wanna do, we want to add a search box to be able to allow our users easily find items, especially when we have more than two items available. And we're also going to do the same thing with pagination. So getting started, let's take a look at our complimentary blog article. And as you scroll down, you're going to find our search.tsx code snippet. So let's start there. This is going to be our front end component. So let's go ahead, create it first, and then we'll walk through the code to talk about what everything is and does. Inside of our front end project folder, so inside your Next.js application, go ahead and navigate to source, components, custom, and let's create a new component called search. So I'm going to go a new file and we're going to call it search.tsx. So let's go ahead, grab our code snippet and paste it in inside our code editor. If we navigate to the top, you're gonna to notice that we're using a library called use the bounce. Let's go ahead and install it now. So inside VS Code, in the front end of my project, I'm going to run yarn add, and we're going to use the bounce. And close that window. Now that we have the bounce installed, let's go ahead and take a look at this code. In order to make our search component use, we are using a couple of Next.js hooks, using use search params, use router and use path name, as well as use the bounce callback hook that we just mentioned. Taking a look at our input field, we are setting the initial value by getting the query from our URL using the search params like get method, which we'll take a look in just a moment. Inside our use the bounce callback, this is the function that's responsible for handling our search to prevent our user from spamming our API. We are using use the bounce callback to add a little delay so when the user is typing each search character, it's not constantly firing or making a call to our endpoint. And basically what we're doing here, we are creating a new search params using our URL search params function. We are checking if there is a term, if the term gets updated, we go ahead and set that term to our params, else we go ahead and delete it. And we're using replace from use router to go ahead and replace the URL with the parameters that we want to pass to our search. So if this is still a little bit confusing, we'll take a look at this component in action in just a moment. But referencing our blog post, you could take a look at each individual pieces in the Next.js documentation. So the use search param allows you to hook into your client component that lets you read the URL query string that you get from the top of URL. The use router, and again, feel free to take a look at the documentation, allows us to access the router object inside of our function application. And we are using the replace method to prevent adding a new URL entry into the history stack. And you could take a look more on details in the Next.js application on the use router. You could find router replace, and here it's gonna go ahead and walk you through what we're doing. And here you could see that route replace works very similar to route push. The only difference is it's not going to continue to add new items to the history stack. And instead, it's going to replace it. And we're using use path name, which is a hook that allows us to get the path URL to our item to which we're going to append our search parameters. So now that we know that, first things first, let's go ahead and use our search component. So in VS Code, let's navigate to our app dashboard route in summaries, and let's go inside our page.tsx file. Let's go ahead and import our search component that we just created, and let's go ahead, add it in our code right before our link card grid. Now that we have our search our component added, let's take a look at our front end. And now you could see our component. As I start typing term, Notice in our URL, we append our and create our query, and our query has our text, which is term. Now, if I refresh this, notice how our form doesn't clear out. I could also say terms and click enter. Notice how our input gets updated. The reason this works, if we take a look in our code, back in our search component, we could see that we're using search params.get method 
we are looking up our query and we're returning the string for our query. So taking a look in our URL, notice we're looking up our query and we're returning our text with these terms. And that's what sets our default value in our input component. Now let's take a look at the unchanged method. So as I type, this is a new search. Notice that our string of text gets updated after I stop. That is caused by our use the bounce hook with our 300 millisecond delay. So this way we're not constantly calling our endpoint, but we're waiting for the user to finish typing the search param. So this is the hook that we're using with our delay. Just like we discussed, we're using our search params to get our params out of our URL. Then we set the params in our URL and we're using replace to change our URL, which will include the path name and the params that we're passing. So every time I update our search param, here is a new search that is using the replace to replace our search string in the URL. Hopefully that makes sense. So now that we are getting our query search, we are able to use the query search from the URL and send that query to our Shrapi endpoint to query our data based on the search provided. So let's do that next. The final step is to update our get summary slaughter, where we're going to use our filtering to filter our data based on our title and our content. You could learn more in the Strapi documentation of all the different operators available to you, which is many, but we're just gonna use a couple of them. So let's jump right into it. In our Strapi application, let's navigate to data loaders and navigate to our get summaries function. First, we're gonna update it by passing a query string that we could use as an argument. And then we're going to use our QS library to construct our filtering. And here we're gonna sort by uh, created at field in a descending order. And for the filters, we're going to check the following fields. If the title contains the query string and we're using contains with a I, which is basically gonna be case insensitive. And we're gonna check either the title if it contains the query string or our summary uh, content that contains a query string. And all we're going to do is append that query to our URL. Now that we updated our get summary loader, let's navigate back to our dashboard summaries page. And here we're going to see an error that is expecting a query string as an argument. You gotta love TypeScript. I'm a slow adapter to TypeScript, I'm still learning, but oh my goodness, does it save time. So now let's go ahead and update this by passing our query. And if you're wondering where are we getting this amazing query, we're going to get it from our search params. So let's first create an interface and we're going to say interface search params props. And we want to pull our query from our search params. We have access to that from the search params in our props. So I'm going to say search params and it's going to be read only search params props. And next we're going to create a variable to store our search param and we're going to get the search params from my query. It's either gonna be the query or an empty string. And we are passing it to our get summaries loader function. And inside our loaders, we get that query string and we pass it via our filters to filter on our title and our summary. So after these changes, let's go back to our front end and see if this works. So here we have only two items, but let's uh, see if it works. I'm just gonna search for strappy middleware. Oh, so that works, all right. And if we search the second item, let's search by, we see live projects with next. So I'm just gonna type live projects and notice that it works as well, which is really awesome. So now that we know our search works, in the next video, we're going to take a look how to handle pagination. So I'll see you in the next video.